Hi, Nick. How are you? I'm not too bad. How are you? I'm very good. So for those of you that don't know me, my name is Emma, Emma Good of 24 Fingers Social Media Agency in Brentwood. And today, Nick is going to be answering our 24 questions that we do. Nick is from an estate agency called Nest in Essex. And as everybody knows, we are Essex through and through. So it's brilliant to talk to another Essex business owner today. So Nick, good Friday so far? Yeah, it's, uh, it's been okay. It's been interesting. There's lots of uh, sort of touching base with clients and reassuring at the moment. So, um, yeah, it's, it's certainly interesting, but it's been a good day. Uh, we were talking earlier, and it's been a bit of a roller coaster um, the last five weeks. But, um, yeah, it's, it's good to hear that you're still able to communicate with your clients. That's good. So I'm going to kick off, if that's all right, with yep. what's your favourite word? Um, it, it's going to sound a bit of a cliche, but I like Go the on. word collaborate. You like the word, right? Yeah. I like the word collaborate. Um, and for a mixture of reasons, but mainly because my job involves collaborating with a lot of individuals and it works better when you do that. Um, but I think it's a word that's not used enough. And particularly in business, I think people shy away from collaborating together. Um, that's so, a really yeah. good point. I think sometimes when people want to collaborate, they only see what's in it for them, whereas actually yeah. a true collaboration is where both parties win exactly exactly and it, it, it's good because there's going to be things that that other party can bring to the table the same as you can bring to the table so kind of working together it does make sense Very good i like it so what gets you up in the morning uh normally my alarm clock but um re really it's the kids um it's the kids i've got four kids uh, i've got triplet boys wow uh, who are now eight and uh i've got a one-year-old daughter as well and Amazing. Yeah, I think just kind of making sure that they've got a nice, comfortable life is is kind of really what gets me up. As a driver, yeah, as yeah, a parent, definitely. agree with that. So what do you truly, honestly think of social media? Um, it's a minefield. It's a minefield. <laughs> and I think it's one of them things that if if you can guess it right, then it's really, really good. But also, if you guess it wrong, it can go the other way. Um, yeah. and it I think is far far more complicated than I initially thought um, and I think the, the same as many businesses think it's just as simple as posting something and it will take care of itself um, I like it I spend too much time on it uh -huh. uh, definitely but I do I do like it and I think it's it's a major part of businesses now I think if anybody also is sitting there going, actually, I find it a mindful too, come along to one of our workshops. So I've just got off um, email workshop this morning where we took um, nine business owners through how to email more effectively. We do one platform a week. So um, next week we have got reviews and testimonials. Following week, we've got our creative apps. If anybody's thinking, actually, do you know what? I'm trying social media and it's not really doing it for me. I'm not getting what I want out of it come to the workshops they're two hours they're um between 20 and 25 pound really accessible loads of um chance to ask us individual questions as well so um thank you nick um kindles or books uh neither neither I'm not, I'm not a book reader um okay. i don't i listen to books so i tend to listen to the audio book on my phone when i walk the dog yeah, so, uh, yeah, I think I'd have to. Yeah, I'd have to take my own. Option. A third, you sort of third option, okay? So, um, you're in um, property and real estate. Um, yeah. What do you think is the biggest challenge to your industry right now? I think education. I think education, but education in the general public, because I think estate agents have got a bad reputation, yeah. which has been gained over many, many years, mostly during the sort of eighties and nineties. Um, Shiny suit syndrome exactly exactly that and i think that the problem is is that it, the industry's moved on massively particularly in the last sort of i'd say five to ten years but i think the general public have an issue of they're not quite educated on what is an acceptable level for an estate agent and what they should accept from their agent and also what is not acceptable yeah that that balance isn't isn't there and i think if the um general public and it's not their fault because estate agents are secretive creatures that don't tend to like to give much away yeah. um i think if the general public are educated to that it's going to improve the standard of the industry it's it's an amazing industry it really is brilliant and you get to meet some really remarkable characters particularly with their own story and their own background so it's it's so so interesting but yeah unfortunately if you if you're a really good agent surrounded by a bad bunch you 
you just yeah. get grouped in that in that bunch unfortunately no, but I think that's especially important if somebody's like an accidental landlord as well or yeah. just considering doing buy to let you can make some uh, huge mistakes by not choosing the right agent can't you yeah yeah and the, the problem with agency as well is that a lot of the time an estate agent is appointed based on that valuation meeting that they have yeah. and that pitch that they deliver at that point is so polished and so well practiced that it's going to be perfect but it's the after bit that kind of takes that effect and I think people jump into that decision far too quick and then they live to regret it but they're stuck in a contract so they can't do anything about it and it's it boils back to that education thing I think if they're asking the right questions they're gonna they're gonna really find out who they're dealing with but it's um yeah it's certainly an interesting industry it's a good point i think also in terms of valuations things can swing so varied can't they you know one valuation here one valuation here so that's a really good point yeah. so do you want to be an estate agent when you're growing up no no i be? didn't i didn't really have an aim i was a little bit lost up until about 2021 i was just a little bit lost i mean as a as a small small kid I wanted to be a policeman. Um, that that was kind of my my thing when I was a kid. But sort of growing up in my teens, I was just a little bit lost. I didn't quite know where where I wanted to be, what I fit in. I, I quite enjoyed art, um, but I didn't really have any any aims. And then something twigged when I was twenty one, and I, I just kind of fell into it um, more because I, I was kind of encouraged by somebody who said that I wouldn't get the job that I kind of went to turn. <laughs> so it's a bit of a wager yeah yeah uh, that's kind of how it started but yeah certainly if you'd have gone back to 12 year old nick and said to him would you be in in this position when they're 30 i probably would have laughed <laughs> you've answered my next question so i'm going to move on um so your favorite word was collaborate can you use it in a sentence i think businesses need to collaborate more okay now can you make it rhyme oh oh you got me there you got me there um I've picked a hard word, haven't I? <laughs> I've picked a hard word. I can't think of a rhyme for that one. It could be, um, there's nothing better than when I collaborate with my mate. I don't know. Perfect. We'll go with that. Go with that. Um, so what advice would you give to the 12-year-old Nick? Don't take life too seriously. Okay. I think I think growing up, going through school, we're, we're kind of, it's ingrained in us that we need to be serious and everything is important and really it's it's not um don't tell my 18 year old that <laughs> i think just enjoy things more i think because we're you know even down to school grades and and growing up and that bit i just think it's so ingrained in this that is so serious when nothing towards my my schooling kind of led to what i'm yeah. doing now so i think just don't take things so seriously and enjoy yourself i'm putting my hands over his ears but yeah i i know what you mean um what's the best thing anyone's ever done for you um i think it was a uh, a gentleman i won't mention his name but before i started my business i was in a pretty bad position and my luck was down a little bit and he kind of pulled me aside and had a chat and it, it was a chat that wasn't expected and it we it's not that we I mean, we worked together, we got on fine, but it, it was a chat that I do think changed the entire course where my life went from that point. Yeah, amazing. And, I, I, and it was one of them chats that he 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 could have not said anything. Yeah, he did we, need to. Yeah, and because he pulled me aside and, and he felt so strongly like he had to say it, um, that that transformed a lot. Amazing. I, I can, uh, I can uh, relate to that. Um, Tell me, what's been your career defining moment? You might not have had it so yet. It might be to come. I think um, it, it's a transformation of my business because my business has been two different things. So when I first started, we, we went on the low cost uh, kind of agency model. And then about two years ago, that transformed and we went, we changed what we was doing and how we were doing it and become one of the most expensive locally. Um, and when I started getting feedback from that particular type of service and when um, naturally fees start coming in, there was a bit of a moment where it kind of felt right. And then out yeah. of nowhere, we won five awards. 
um, in the space of three months. So I would I would say that kind of period so of time. Yeah, that that thank you. That it was that sort of period of time that I think yeah was was my career defining moment. Love that. Very inspiring. So if you want a big award of some kind, who would you thank? Um it's it's going to say cliche. This is going to sound really cliche and corny, but do I, I it, say do it. my granddad. Oh, my granddad. Um, he, he was a big uh, he was a big character growing up, and he, he's someone that I've always uh, had a lot of respect for. And unfortunately, he passed away when I was quite young. Uh, well, in my in my mid teens, but um, it it's someone that I've kind of always felt is is going to be proud of everything I'm doing. Love that. Love that. So can you give us a time saver of the day? Is there anything that you do that you can share? Um, a few minutes? I think automation. I think putting automation into your business um, and whether it be things like email, uh, certain advertisement platforms, ways of dealing with inquiries, just that automation can save so much time. Yeah. And that time uh, can be used elsewhere uh, and most importantly, family time, sort of having having some evenings back and uh, having that time back. So, yeah, I think automation is is definitely the best thing. You're 100 percent right. So we had, um, like I said, we had the email workshop this morning. We were talking about email automation, the difference it's made in, in our business. And yeah, 100 percent agree that if you can automate it, do it. Yeah. Um, but then I've only got one child, you've got four, so you definitely <laughs> <laughs> um, where do you see the property industry in 24 months? I there's a big change going on at the moment, particularly the way uh, the portals have got a bit of a, a dominance. So with things yeah. like right moves, they've they've got quite a dominance on the industry. Um, I foresee agencies going. I don't. And, and what I mean by that is, I mean estate agencies as a company, they're going to become less important. I think the individuals that work in them are going to become more important. So when you look at some external in, uh, external property uh, industries like the Australian model and the American model, it's a lot on the um, the real estate agents as individuals. It's more about individual relationships, isn't it? Exactly, exactly. And they work under a umbrella of some form. And I, I think the UK is going to start adopting that model and we're going to see um, estate agents um, reviewed and audited individually. Yeah, so, yeah, yeah. yeah people know yeah okay they're dealing with for argument's sake Ness in Essex but it's Nick they're dealing with from there yeah, yeah, yeah. Um, and I think that's going to be where this industry is going over the next sort of couple of years I think that would probably lend itself to being more of a sourcing agent as well than purely going to a shop window yeah there's I think with with the um with the lines of right move Zoopla prime location there's a few others as well and there's a new one being launched this month um I think with the likes of them, being able to find that property is fairly easy. But I think having an agent to negotiate on your purchase is going to be a regular thing. So not all agents offer that at the moment. They, they all do it on the sale, but nobody seems to do it on the purchase. purchase. I think appointing an agent to negotiate the price on your purchase, that's also going to become a mainstream thing. Interesting. Um, we'll, we'll be cursed in fields. Um, <laughs> so where were you 24 months ago? Um... I was in a bit of a position where I was debating on whether I wanted to carry on doing this. Um, I'd, I'd had three tough years trying to get the business up and running on that low fee model. Um, I had a bit of inspiration and it was really a turning point that I needed to decide, do I want to continue this and give it my all or knock it on the head and go and find a, a secured employed role. So yeah. I was a little bit lost and I was kind of looking for a bit of clarity, which did come very which, which came yeah well otherwise we wouldn't be doing what we're doing today exactly exactly right. can you tell us an interesting fact about your company um it started from my spare bedroom um and uh it all started with a budget of 55 quid okay love that good and look at you now <laughs> um, what's an interesting um sorry i've said that um, if you could have a 24 minute skype chat with anyone living or dead who would it be um i'm i'm inclined to say and again it, it's slightly corny but I, I would like to say again with my granddad to yeah. have, have yeah have that, that moment just to talk to him um and kind of touch base i think i think that would be nice if we're talking personal uh, i think from yeah. that aspect if we're talking business wise um 
I mean, there's there's loads of names there. I'm quite a fan of uh, James Sinclair, who um, runs Marsh Farm. Uh, I quite like the the way that he portrays himself. So um, yeah, if it was business wise, I think it'd be him. Okay, we'll tag James in later. Um, <laughs> what's one word you'd like people to describe you with? Fair. Nice. Fair. Um, fair. Fair in everything I do, hopefully. Yeah, very nice. Um, so would you mind taking a selfie first time to can take a screen grab? So smile, Nick. Oh, hang on. Oh, you got something? Yeah, he's yeah. got a pop. No, oh, oh. no, I just picked up my phone. Oh, okay. Right, that's all right. I, did. I thought you were going to uh, pull up a roller banner or something. No. <laughs> okay. Oh, and just lost my other questions. They're on the back. I'll send them to you. What's number 21? No, I've got it. And um, what's your favourite Twitter handle or social media campaign? Um, I don't really use Twitter. Twitter is one of the okay. things that I've not really, uh, not really got Twitter's involved the with. the best. Twitter's the best. Is there any social that you like? Yes, I've like? become a fan of LinkedIn. Yeah. Um, I, and it, I wasn't, I wasn't at first. So I've become a fan of LinkedIn, and there's there's a particularly a couple of guys on there that I find quite amusing. Um. So uh, there's a guy called Mike Winnett, I think I pronounced his name right, and I find some of these videos quite quite funny. Um, go, 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 go follow Mike. And what's one quote that defined your work ethic? Oh, quote. Um, I think I think it was a Gandhi quote, but it was saying it was something along the lines of um, that if you if you're talking your talking about something you already know but if you listen you may learn something new like that it's it's not them exact words but it's very yeah, close yeah, yeah, close yeah. to I like that pretty good we'll use that um what's been the best part of your day so far so far speaking to clients i re i do really enjoy that um, yeah, because good. it's it's not all business related it, you can sit down and have a chat with them and there's so many different characters there and they're all very um what's what's the word they all understand that the times we're in are, are really odd and there's there's yeah. not really much that i can kind of suggest with them so it, it's a lot of just sort of chatting and seeing how each other is um so it's, that's it's nice a, so we all need that right now don't we yeah yeah and finally anything to plug um i think uh well, well of course my estate agency to start with uh which is nesting essex but, yep. um i've also just recently started my own podcast uh, which is called a different way uh which is discussing uh business and tips that small business owners i'm kind of aiming at one man band or small startups uh lots of tips that they can start implementing in their business today uh, to help them out brilliant cool so how big how can people find you um, so you can uh, just search me on LinkedIn or Facebook. Just search Nick Cheshire. Um, I'll I'll be on there. It's pretty easy to find. Or head over to our website, which is uh, www.nestinessex.co.uk. Brilliant. Thank you very much, Nick. Thank you very much for your time. And uh, as always, take care, stay safe and have a nice weekend. You too. Thanks for having me. Take care. Bye.